Let's talk about absolute value functions and reciprocal functions, lesson number four, absolute value transformations. Now in preparation for Math 30, we're going to have to look at how to transform different functions, and absolute value functions are one of those types of functions. Uh, we've already done that with quadratic functions, and we're going to be learning it with all different types of functions, but what kind of transformations can occur? So let's recall the definition of absolute value. We have the absolute value of x is equal to x, if x is greater than 0, and it's negative x if x is less than 0. Now just be very careful of this negative. Remember this negative is only to make it positive because that x would have been po negative anyway. You can see from this, this descri description. So let's take a look and investigate the graphs of y equals f of x and y equals f of x, or the absolute value of x. So taking a look here, a function f of x has an equation here of y equals x minus 1. So what is the equation for y equals of the absolute value of f of x? Well, it takes what f of x was, x minus 1, and puts these vertical bars around it to say y equals the absolute value of x minus 1. Okay. When we take a look at that, then let's complete the table of values for y equals f of x and y equals the absolute value of f of x. So here, f of x, we take this, minus 1, that's minus 5, minus 4, minus 3, minus 2, minus 1, 0, 1, 2, and 3. Okay, let's take a look at here the absolute value of f of x. So we have f of x value here. And now we take the absolute value, so this is going to be positive 5, positive 4, positive 3, positive 2, positive 1. And here, take a look at how this works. Since it's already positive here, we're not going to be changing anything here. Alright, so let's sketch the graphs of y equals f of x and y equals the absolute value of f of x on the same grid. So here I'm going to use y equals f of x here in blue. So x minus 1, let's take a look. If we were to sketch this graph then we'd have our x minus 1. Now if you, what do you notice here, this x minus 1 is really like a y equals x but over to the right 1. So here let's we can see this this is our y equals x minus 1, like so. Okay, there's our y equals x minus 1. It's y equals x, but moved over to the right one unit. Okay, what happens to our y, what, what's going to happen to our y equals absolute value of x minus 1? Remember, just keep in mind, this is these absolute value symbols, these vertical bars. So it takes... You know, if it's, if it's positive already here, 0, then these ones, all this doesn't change at all. That's the same. But any place where it's negative or underneath the x-axis, it's going to actually draw this kind of reflection thing happening. And there it is. This is our y equals x minus 1. In fact, I'll just make it... You can see the red is like right on top of that one. So you can see this y equals absolute value of x minus 1 is x minus 1 for the positive part. And as soon as x minus 1 goes into the negative, it flips it or it takes a reflection in the x-axis there. So what can we notice? Well, we can notice that when f of x is greater than 0, when f of x is positive, then the y equals the absolute value of f of x is identical. It's the same as y equals f of x. But when f of x is negative, the graph of y equals of the absolute value of f of x is a reflection in the x-axis. Shown to the right here, we have an equation y equals x squared minus 4. Can we see here that this, this is the zero line here? And we can see normally we would have this x squared right here, but it is traversed or translated down four units here. x squared minus four is down four. The vertex 
originally at 0, 0 is now 1, 2, 3, 4. And so we have this x squared minus 4. Let's write the equation for y equals the absolute value of f of x. Here's the function here. And so this is going to be e y equal the absolute value of x squared minus 4. Well, what do you think will happen? Well, we can think of the absolute value as if it's positive, you're safe. But if you're negative, then we have to take the opposite of negative. We don't like the absolute value doesn't like negative. So we're going to use this a graph and calculator perhaps to sketch it. But we'll notice here we can see it visually perhaps. So here whenever the y values are above, so here let me just draw this. The blue here is going to be the same. But where it's negative, where it's negative here, it's going to reflect in the axis. So this one is going to move up to there. This is going to move to there. This is going to move to there. We have this action happening here. What normally was a normal looking parabola underneath here became this W shape, weird W shape, because the absolute value does not like anything that's negative. Do the observations in here apply in this example? You know, in 1D, is it identical if it's positive? and a reflection when it's negative? Yes, it is. So we have some general rules to follow. When the function is positive, you know, if it, the graph of the f of, f, f of x is above the x-axis, the graph of the absolute value of f of x is identical. It would be exactly the same. But when the y values of the curve are below zero, or when the function is negative, the graph is below the x-axis, then the graph of the y of y equals the absolute value of x is a reflection of that graph y equals f of x in the x-axis. So where it's negative, it's going to flip up. Where it's positive already, it's not going to change. So we just go point by point and point by point and point by point here. And I'm going to start from this side because I can see anything that's above the x-axis. So from here and above, here and above. And so I look along the x here that's above, 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 that's above. Oh, there's a, an important point right here at zero. But and now the y values are negative. You have a negative value of maybe it's like a half here, or two here, and it could be stays negative at negative three or something like that, but it certainly is negative. So we can see here this point, if we see you know how far away it is from the x-axis, it's going to be that far away from the x-axis. On the other side, it's going to be positive. So here you can see that. It looks like it's going to be there. So here, it stays the same if it's positive. But where it's negative, it's going to flip up to be positive. OK, take a look at B here. We can see we have everything. Everything here is negative. Let's see if we can determine the, the equation of this, this parabola here. Well, we have a maximum here that looks like it's at negative 1, and it's pointed down. Uh, we don't have another point here, so we can't exactly determine A. But we know this is, looks something like a negative, you know, y is equal to negative A squared, right? Something like that. Uh, we know that there's nothing in this bracket here because the vertex hasn't moved off of the, the y-axis. Okay, so let's we can do point by point if we wish. Since this is a negative, 0, negative 1 is actually going to end up becoming 0, 1. And then here, this is, say, 1, 1, 2. This is going to be 1, negative 2, sorry. This is going to be 1, 2. This one is negative 1, negative 2, but this is going to be a negative 1. It's going to be 2 up here. So we can see that we have this thing happening. And you can see it's a reflection of this function in the x-axis here. OK, so let's take a look at number 4. We're going to consider all the graphs of y equals f of x and y equals the absolute value of f of x from parts 
you know, one to three of this investigation, and we're going to compare all the following aspects of this, these two functions. So let's take a look at domain and range. And what can we say about the domain for each of these? Well, we can take a look at these. Oh, the domain's the same. There's always an x, so a value for, for x when there's an, a value for x in the, or for a value of y in the original function. So here the domain, we can say the domain is the same. It's the same domain. Okay. What about the range? Well, the range of y equals the absolute value of f of x, it's going to include all f of x values when f of x is greater than 0. And it's going to include, now we're, we're kind of going back to our piecewise function here, it's going to include all all the values of negative f of x when f of x is less than 0. And in fact, we can just also include the 0 here. Okay, what about the x-intercepts? What happens to the x-intercepts? Well, the x-intercepts remain the same. Whatever zeros they are of the original function, they're also going to be zeros of the absolute value function. Okay, but what about y-intercepts? Well, if the y-intercept of f of x is positive, then it's no change, right? Then there will be no change. And the, the y-intercepts of the absolute value of f of x is going to be the same. But if the y-intercept of f of x is negative, the y-intercept of the absolute value of f of x is going to be the opposite value of the original, original y-intercept. Now that's only if the y-intercept is negative. If the original y-intercept is negative, then taking the absolute value of the whole function is going to make that y-intercept from a negative to reflect it across the x-axis to become a positive. All right, so you're ready for your assignment, and I will see you in class.